We are live. Everything's good here? Mm-hmm. Hey, what's happening, guys? Welcome back to C- Society. Or if I did the whole podcast like this, <laughs> the whole day. Yeah, so, hey, you guys might have heard a uh, a new voice. That is the voice of uh, Cameron Hill. We call Cam. Gave you your whole name, Cam. I sure did. Uh, Cam Cam always has great insights, and he just has to say shit in the darkness. So we were like, yo, let's give Cam a mic. Right, Cam? No longer the echoey voice. No longer the echoey voice you hear now. He's just you'll, you'll never see his face. So that's gonna be the fun part. <laughs> Who is Cam? What is he look like? People gonna look at you, uh, find you online, and that's how you start a uh, a uh, you'll be a rock star, bro. Like people will start this whole thing about what does Cam look like, and there'll be like pictures and shit of you somewhere, you know, uh, the uh, uh, artist renderings of what you might look like. The elusive billionaire. <laughs> yes, yes. If Cam was a billionaire, he wouldn't be here though. So he's not a billionaire, guys. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> nope, nope. You want to be doing this? You be on one of them islands somewhere, man. Not a uh, what's his name island? Uh, who's that guy? You know what I'm talking about? Clooney? No, not that guy. The guy who just uh, killed himself. You know what I'm talking about? The guy who was on <laughs> charged for child molestation and shit. No. Nope. Come on, Cam. The guy who was hanging out with Trump and Clinton. Oh. There you go. Can't remember his name either. But good, he's dead. Who yeah. cares? Let's not bring him up. He's a child molester. Anyways, that had nothing to do with anything. Just want to introduce Cam <laughs> on the mic here at She Money Society. Whoever uses this mic next is, is going to hate because I'm about to spit on it the whole time. Welcome back, guys. So if you don't know, if you're brand new here, hi. Welcome. Come on in. Take off your shoes. Relax. Have a seat. I got plenty of room on my leather couch. All right. Relax yourselves. Uh, here at See My Society, the whole idea is to help you get closer to the person you see in your head. And this is advice from a former bum to uh, probably you're probably a bum if you're watching this. You probably had some goals you haven't accomplished. Uh, you probably got a bunch of shit on your to-do list you ain't do. Right, and this is pretty much coming from a guy. I'm not one of these guys who are going to be like, and then I think you should blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is from one dummy to a bunch of other dummies. <laughs> okay, <laughs> pretty much. I'm not, I'm not calling you a dummy. I just, I just know you haven't operated in the way you like to. All right. And uh, my little short story, I'm a writer, comedian. Uh, I've been homeless, been in jail, all that good stuff. Not like jail, jail. I've been in, like, county for sure. Not for, like, murder. Uh, we'll explain it later. Uh, but still, it was from being dumb. It was just doing dumb shit. All right? Standing in dumb shit, uh, doubling down in dumb shit. And then I realized, uh, this is this sucks. This is not what I want. And then I changed my life. All right? So today, uh, we're talking about ownership. Owning your shit. Own your shit. Oh, oh yeah, you, you've been screwing up. You're a screw up. Yeah, I I used to like my friends and everybody used to call me a screw up, and I used to just be like, yeah, well I'm that guy. Blah, 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 and I screw up, and that was like my identity for a while. And I was like, yeah, this fucking sucks. Who wants to be the screw up? Like who <laughs> who wants to be known as that shit? I was like, I don't want to be the screw up of the group. Like that's awful. I want to be uh, a person who works and is responsible, someone can count on. You know, at least count on myself. Right, right, Cam. Exactly. You should at least be able to kind of, yo, disappointing myself. So whenever, like, I still get emotional about this sometimes, but the thing that scares me most is disappointing myself on a daily. That's that's what makes me get up and go do stuff because I don't want to let myself down. It's like if you tell yourself you're going to go to the gym in the morning and you have every all the uh, ample opportunity to do so, right? There's things that are emergency, but most are excuses. But if you get up and you don't go because of you, you let yourself down. You disappointed. Like, that's the worst. That's the worst thing you can do is let yourself down. I don't really care so much about letting other people down. All right. But you do this. This is what we'll do. We'll go and we'll break our necks to go help somebody out. We'll stay late for a job we hate, but we won't do that stuff for ourselves. And that doesn't make any sense. Like, why would we go like through thick and thin for someone else, but not for you? Not for me. I deserve it, too. Don't I? Right. So that's the idea. Um, and my, my whole goal was to always get like, there's a person in my head that I see and I'm like, I'm trying to get closer to that person. What do I have to do? What are the steps I have to take to get closer to the person I see in my head? All right. We all have that person in our head, right, Cam? True. You see that, you see that thing you're trying to do. You go, you look five, 10, 15, 20 years down the line. You go, I should be here. So then I'm like, well, what do I got to do to get there? You know? So that's my goal. That's my, that's always my goal. Like get closer to that. So I made a whole plan, a whole list of stuff. Um, but I probably had from the years 20 to 27. Uh, I'm 33. I, I'm, I'm 34. Let me just let me just put it out there now. It's close enough now 
by the time you guys see this, <laughs> I'm going to be 34. But by the time I was 20 to 27, I was a straight up scrub. And I look at Cam. Cam, you were what, 22, 23? I'm 24. 24, so right? when you were 10, I was zero. When I was 10, <laughs> Cam was zero. He was just a young spermy swimming, you know? And uh, so I think about this like Cam, Cam was way more mature than I was at 24. I thought I was mature. I was doing a lot of stuff, but I wasn't succeeding at anything. I was doing a lot of bullshit. But I was blaming everybody else. I blame the government. I blame my parents for not being rich and famous. I look at Diddy's kid. I'm like, how come Diddy, like, how does that happen? How, does, how come Diddy, Diddy's son gets to have a, a whole wonderful world and I didn't? You know what I mean? And I didn't have it bad by any means, but I don't have Diddy's son life. You know, I think what I think about, like, ah. You know what I mean? I tell my mom, like, hey, 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 you should have been out here hoeing. You know, not saying that Diddy's son's mom is a hoe. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying that could have been. All right, anyways. Now, nah, he's never going to see this. None of them. They probably won't watch me, right? All right. So that's always my thought. I'm always like, but I used to blame everybody. You know, I blamed, uh, I used to blame the government for having registration on cars. I'm like, why do they need to know whose car this is? I was like, well, in case a car gets stolen. But if a car gets stolen, it's a car gets stolen. Why do I got to pay out of my pocket for registration? I used to make excuses for everything. I didn't even understand meters, right? I was like, oh, oh, I got to pay a meter for space, for air? Are you serious? Because somebody drove some lines on the ground? Now I have to obtain by this? Why? I was like, that's dumb. I hate the government. So I was, like I said, clearly I was blaming everybody. All right, so, uh, and then, all right, so let's 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 start at the point where my life uh, changed. I told this story maybe um, one or twice on this uh, I, uh, podcast. I might have. Uh, I think you've heard my jail story, right, Cam? Yeah, you told it at least, the whole story at least once. On okay, this. I'm going to do a brief whole story again. <laughs> but this was the pivotal point of my, all right, so I went to jail uh, for parking tickets, okay? I went to jail for three days in County, Los Angeles. Uh, what is it called? Twin Towers. If anybody's heard, they're like, <gasps> all right, everybody gassed. And I was, I didn't get abused or raped or beat up or anything like that. I was very fortunate to only do three days. Um, if you had, would you tell us? About which part? If you had been abused or raped? <laughs> uh, no. I, you, the abuse part, maybe. I'd be like, oh, I got attacked, but definitely not the rape part. You guys would have never known that. Never. That had never came out. And, and uh, you would have seen me get all cold, and I don't, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> That's what. <we're laughs> uh, so like, I'm in, I'm in. Uh, actually, the reason we got pulled over, I got to tell that story. But I was, it was me and Tony Baker. We were together that day, and uh, that's a whole another story. I don't want to tell it right now because I ain't got time for all that. But I, I promise, I'll tell that wonderful story uh, another time when me and Tony got pulled over and I got arrested that night. Uh, so, anyways, uh, I went to Jeff parking ticket. So, I had. Like a forty thousand dollar warrant for my arrest, okay. And I was, I thought I was pretty high to not commit a, a real crime, right? But I had missed a bench warrant. Now let me tell you how this ticket. Let me tell you how forty thousand dollars steamrolled from twenty five cents, okay? <laughs> you got it, like this is amazing. So I was parking at a meter once, right? And I was like, ah, I'm gonna be here for two minutes, uh, and I really took like two hours, okay? So I come back and it was a parking ticket, and I was like, fuck that parking ticket i'm about to be rich and famous any day now i'll pay that back whenever i want to all right so that little parking ticket uh turns into you know another fine right and then that fine turns into a suspended license right and then that suspended license uh, uh turns into a bench warrant okay now i didn't know all this was happening because i threw the ticket away all right i was like yeah 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 when they come for me i'll have enough money to pay it all right so this is 25 cents i could have put in the machine when i was like 20 22 at the time it was 07 they caught me 2017 no 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 sorry 2007 they caught me 2012 so I escaped for five years. I was on the run <laughs> from 25 cents at a meter, right? So I was really, like, killing it. I was like, they'll never catch me. <laughs> and I'm thinking I'm like Bunny, Bonnie and Clyde throwing across America, right? I thought I was doing some great service. Like, yeah, man, 25 cent ticket, you know, for, for a meter. I don't pay the meters. I don't pay meters, man, right? That's the government trying to keep you down, all that good shit. All right, anyways. So uh, I get put over once, and then the cop was like, I was talking shit. But because, like I said, the whole story, it was, it was a little racism how we got pulled over. We, we weren't driving. We were standing in place, and the cops came up to us. Again, story for another day. All right. So I'm talking shit, and the guy's like, oh, I know why he's talking shit. He's got a $40,000 warrant. I'm like, hey, officer, hey, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, the language I was using earlier, man, you guys do fine work uh, in Los Angeles. I know it's hard. 
you know, you never know when somebody's gonna pull out a gun on you. You know, at any time. Um, yeah. So what was this? Uh, was this? Uh, right. And he was like, "Well, if you got four thousand uh, dollars, I can let you go." And I was like, "Take me to jail. <laughs> I got four thousand dollars, right?" So uh, they take me to jail. I get processed, which is the most dehumanizing thing in the world. It's the I've shit it outside. You know what I mean? And it still wasn't worse than. <laughs> than uh going to being processed through county that was the worst most dehumanizing thing you'll ever go through all right so uh i'm in jail and i was like day one i was really upset day one i was furious i was like man this is what i'm talking about man this is the man can't keep my brother down because little stuff like this and this is how they get you brother right so i'm telling myself that right and uh and then i'm and then i'm with a bunch of other guys who are like yeah you know what i mean we're all in there like yeah we're all in. but no matter what you're in jail for Everybody says they're in jail for some bullshit. There was a guy who literally told me he hit his wife with a tire iron. He was like, man, I'm just in here for some more bullshit, man. Hit my wife with a tire iron and shit. I was like, oh, my God. You did what? And he was like, yeah, man, she was talking loud, man. I don't like that. I was like, yeah, I get it. No problem. <laughs> no problem. I clearly understand. Oh, these guys are crazy. And I was like, I'm in here. I don't belong in jail. And I started thinking, like, I don't belong here. I don't, why would they put me in here with these people? I don't belong in here with these people. Right? I'm like, these people are crazy. I'm in here for parking tickets. For damn parking tickets. All right. Justice is blind. Justice is not. <laughs> but yeah, justice is blind, as they say. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, parking ticket. Yep, I'm in there. And then so day one, I was like, yo, this is um, this is dumb. I don't belong in here. And then day two, I was like, okay, all right. No, this might be a little bit your fault, Chaz. Yeah, that's how I talk to myself. I was like, this might be a little. You know, you probably, you know what? Yeah, okay. If you would have went in there, look, dug for a quarter, going to ask for change, you probably wouldn't be in this particular situation. But something else would have happened, right? And I started doing that, trying to make up other scenarios that never happened and try to use them as an excuse, you know? Because if not this, then that, right? Still blaming the government. And then uh, on day three, I was like, I started laughing. And I was like, yo, you're in jail for parking tickets. I was like, this is the dumbest thing to be in jail about. For tickets? And I was like, then I started laughing. I thought it was hilarious. And then I was like, you know what? This is 100% your fault, bro. And then right then when I said that, I was like, this is 100% your fault. And I was like, but you have the power to fix it. And then I was like, yo. And I don't know why that like sat me up out of my my bunk bed. <laughs> I sat up and I was like, yeah, yeah, you did it. You can fix it. And ever since then, I was like, I'm about to own 100 percent of everything I've ever done. Now, I'm going to own 100 percent of all my failures, all my mistakes. I'm going to blame myself and find other ways how I could have fixed it, because then it's just preventing it from happening next time. And I was like, this is not learning. I was like, yo, this is where we learn. So I don't know why in that moment I was sitting in jail thinking like, Oh, this is everybody else's fault. And then I was like, yo, it's, it's you. And I thought it was the best thing. I was like, yo, Chaz, you're an idiot. I was like, you're an idiot. And I was like, yes, yes, I'm an idiot. And I thought that was great. And then I was like, yo, you're stupid. And I was like, that's wonderful because now you know you have so much to learn, you know? And uh, I've said that, I think, multiple times on this. You'll hear me say that all the time. I'm an idiot. Cam, how many times have I to call myself an idiot on here? Too many. <laughs> so many times. And I keep continue to do so to the day I die because I'm like, yo, we're all dumb. And you, you look at the world on how much there is to learn about everything. You're never going to know everything. You're never going to know enough. You're never going to learn everything. So, like, it's okay. And, yeah, maybe some people don't like down talking themselves and blah, blah, blah. I don't ever see me calling myself an idiot as a bad thing. I always use it as a tool to understand, like, yo, because there's more to learn out there. Well, you know that you don't know. Ex the more you know, the more you know you don't know, right? Did I say that right? Yes, that's, <laughs> that's Socrates talking. Socrates, yep. I thought it was Plato. Actually, I didn't know who it was. I'm glad you said that though. <laughs> uh, but the, yeah, that's 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 the idea, man. Look at Cam out here contributing. Uh, Cam was like, "Oh, one, two, hit the alley oop. Come on, Cam. That's what I'm talking about. That's why you're here. That's how you make the big bucks, baby." Now you're supposed to say something like that. Yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> I pause for you. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, so in my journey, in my journey of ownership. So one of the first things I did is, uh, I knew that I had an issue with money. I didn't have any. Right. <laughs> and I was like, all right, man, this is your main excuse. My main excuse is always, I ain't got no money. 
And no matter what I want to do, and I have big, big ideas, big goals. And this is for anybody, no matter what you want to do. We use money as an excuse all the time. Right. So then I actually went like and somebody was telling me to like go buy this book. So I bought this book. Um, why didn't I write this book down? I wrote some other books down. Um, Tone of Money Makeover by I find it right now. Um, but Tony to, Total Money Makeover. Um, Dave Ramsey. Bam, I don't need that shit. I was about to Google. I don't need that. Um, that was the first book that really taught me finances. But it was like anything that I felt like I needed to learn, I was bad at. I went and invested my money and I took a seminar on money. Uh, I took a seminar on building credit because I ain't had that shit. <laughs> my credit was like, when I first looked at my credit, it was like 400. And I was like, dang, that's low. It was so bad. And I had no idea because I never looked it up. And, um, and I learned how to build my credit. And it was just about like, fixing everything that's my fault because i think the whole credit system is stupid you know but i get it right i get this is this is how credit is to me it's like this it's like if i tell a friend uh, a secret and they tell somebody right my secret uh i can't trust them you know what i mean but i'm not gonna tell a stranger a secret right no i don't know if you're credible right and i feel like how banks are like, like we don't know you fam and then if I tell somebody a secret and they go tell somebody, I might tell them another secret. Your credit went down, right? I don't trust you no more. That's all it is. It's <laughs> just trust. And then you build up enough credit and then they start giving you more money, right? They're like, hey, here's more credit. We trust you now. That's all that issue is. It's just trust. That's an easy breakdown of credit, right? And I was like, I've never heard anyone explain it. It was just like trust. And I was like, oh, banks don't trust you. You got a poor ass credit score. And then you build that shit up. And then you're friends forever. Well, Bank what of I America. don't get is they trust you when you're 18 to take out thousands of dollars well, in debt. but then they're 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 definitely hustling you that is pure hustle they're like hey kid <laughs> those are them sleazy guys hey come on over here i got some puppies that's pretty much what that turns into when you're not a kid anymore <laughs> so instead of the guy in the van and some guy at the college like hey you want these credit cards yeah i give you all this money you don't have to pay it back for a whole year yeah and then no one explains how it works uh but when you go into like once you know understand how this this system works Yo, I, cause I don't believe that don't, this is not a credit card thing, but I don't believe in the whole idea of don't get credit cards. You just have to know how to use them in your advantage. And, and there's a whole, you know, we'll do one, man, because we'll do a whole episode about it. Cause that's how I learned. We'll do a whole episode about, uh, credit and stuff like that. Cause there's five ways, uh, that I learned that affect your credit and stuff like that. And I'll tell you exactly how I did it to build my credit from a 400 to a 750. Uh, it's not 750 right now. Cause I bought some shit. Okay. But it was at the time. All right. That's how I got this shit. Um, and mind you, rich people don't need credit. I found that out also. So that's the next goal is to not need credit. Uh, where are we at, Cam? We're talking about some other shit right now. Got into this. Uh, okay, ownership. All right, so I didn't, I didn't have money, right? All right, so I started working two jobs, and I worked like 70, 80 hours a week because I didn't want money to be. And I made a plan. I had a plan on how to fix my shit, but I was like, money's the key. I had enough. So my first thing was to pay off my debts. I was like, I'm going to pay off every single person I owe money to. I'm going to pay off my personal loans, the people I actually know. Because I owed a lot of money to people, and I'm going to pay off everything I owe credit-wise. Like debt, any, anything I've ever taken out, I'm going to pay everybody back. Now, mind you, I had passed seven years on some shit. I didn't have to pay some people back, but I reached out to the companies. That's probably now that I look at it, it's, it's dumb. But at the time, it meant more. I was like, I'm going to pay off everything I've ever borrowed. So I don't have anyone ever saying I owe them some shit, right? That was my thing. That was my way of taking ownership. I was like, I don't want to owe nobody nothing. All right, double negative. I don't want to owe nobody nothing. And um, there's this model that I follow. It was like I should if you if I had it written out, you'd see it. But it's O W E O, right? Uh, and then it says it says uh, uh, nobody. Okay, it's supposed to be O W E stands for outwork everyone, but O nobody. Okay. Now if you've seen it, actually maybe Cam can help me do that as a as a graphic. We can do that. But outwork everyone, owe nobody. That was my thing. And then I never wanted to owe anyone anything, all right? So even I even took it to the fact, like, even relationships. I had called up some old girlfriends, and I was like, hey, look. Not even I thought it was necessarily my fault <laughs> that some of these worked out. But I was like, hey, for my transgressions, any stress I caused you from my part of relationships that didn't work out, like, I, I apologize because I'm not as sure 100% of the details, but I know I'm not perfect. And I'm like, and that's fine. And I had to own that. And I did it before. Before, we all want to blame somebody else. But that's just immaturity. And I was like, I, I'm, I may not take whatever they put on me. I don't have to do that. But I can definitely take 100% of what I did. You know what I mean? And even the stuff they say I did, I'm like, let me not fight them on it. Let me take that. Like, hey, you said I did such and such. I made you feel a certain way. I'm never in my intention to make you feel that way. My apologies. You know, I was always trying to uplift you, make you feel such and such and such. Right? Like, whatever that might have been. You know? And, uh. 
for example, I had uh, a woman I was dating. She's actually one of my best friends now. We were dating, and she said it hurt her feelings when I didn't do the dishes, right? And I was like, hurt your feelings? But I'm like, they're dishes. I said, how the hell can, can dishes hurt your feelings? <laughs> what are you going to say, Cam? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how can dishes hurt your feelings? I'm like, that's stupid. Unless it's like a nice set of china. Though. It was not. Exactly. It was not, Cam. It was some old Walmart cheap all-in-one box kind of. <laughs> it was not. It was nothing great. Um, and then I wish I would have learned this at the time because now I was like, it didn't, it didn't matter how dumb it was to me. It was something that meant something to her. And that's all that mattered was that it made her feel a certain way. And instead of respecting that, I fought her on how she felt and I can't make somebody feel or try to convince them how they feel is right or wrong, you know? And, uh, so eventually later on, I was like, Hey, look, I, I, I was like, I, I never understood it, but I was like, I should have respected it anyways. That's my fault for not taking that time to just say, you know what, this is one thing you're asking for, I can do that. But instead of trying to use my logic to combat your logic. And I was like, that's not the, that's not the point. The point was, this hurt your feelings, and I should have respected that and took care of some. Di- they're dishes, Chaz. They're dishes. You can wash a couple spoons, a bowl. How hard is that? You know? So it took me a while to even, like, learn that. Just, like, it doesn't matter. If somebody's feeling down, it's not something that hurts you, man. It's like, you got to respect somebody's feelings. To d- discount somebody's feelings is like one of the most disrespectful things you can do to somebody. Nobody wants to feel like their feelings or how they feel don't matter. Or it's not as important to how you feel. That's awful. That's an awful feeling. That shit sucks. You know? It's awful. All right. So <laughs> I was going back to <laughs> I remember what I was talking about before that. Uh, oh, I was paying my debts, apologizing to people. I just wanted to make sure that I took these things on myself. All right. So this is one book. This is, this is a book that uh, I thought was really cool. Um, it's called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. You ever heard of David Goggins, Cam? I have. Yeah. So David Goggins is this hardcore, badass Marine who uh, he did like the Navy SEALs program like three times because, um, you know, some injuries and whatnot. Um, and then he talks about his whole story. So his book is like super dope. And I would I always tell people I do the audio books because um, the audio book that he does is like a podcast ish um, book reading also. And he just dives deeper into um, some of the things that he's talking about, the things that he went through, whether it's like, you know, yeah, an abusive childhood and. Uh, you know, being, you know, being made fun of for being fat. He was a mixed kid, you know, being biracial, being made fun of that. And it was like, uh, those are the things that I think like people still carry with themselves and they, they use it as excuses to not do something or be somebody. And it's like, Hey man, I get it, man. But after, after a minute, those things can, those things can haunt you, but you gotta go get some counseling, bro. Like, There's other ways to combat those things. And I'm saying they happen overnight, but you have to take the initiative to fix and heal yourself. That's on you to heal yourself. That's on 100, it's 100% on you to heal yourself. And if you know these things hurt you, if you know these things kind of haunt you, then take ownership of that. Go see a counselor. Go start doing something. Go read. Read. Go talk to somebody. There's, there are so many options out there to, to heal yourself. There's no excuse to just be hurt and then hurt other people. Hurt people hurt people, guys. Hurt people hurt people. Okay? All right. Don't be a hurt person who hurts people. Heal yourself. And I think that's what people don't do enough. They'll just be like, oh, you know, this is from my childhood. I'm like, yo, man, you're 30. Yeah, I hate when people use that as an excuse. You're 30. You've got time to better yourself. Yes. And and it's not a lot. Like, people really, like, go to, like, therapy sessions like an hour a week. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, you have an hour in your goddamn week. Those are, what, 144 hours in a week? No, oh, I think I got that right. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's I think that's great. No, but it's like when people just say like, "Oh, that's just the way I am." I mean, fuck that. It's like that's a horrible excuse. The fuck that. That's just the way I am. I I I'm just that. Like, and you're it's like so you're happy with being a not you're happy with being a, a subpar right. person. No, that's trashola, guys. That's trashola. I don't like that by any means. And I and me, I'm at the point of my life like we ain't got to talk. I was like, I lived 34 good years without you. <laughs> I can live another 34 without you. You know what I mean? Uh, so you know, take on take ownership of healing yourself, man. That's it's so important. That's what like the mental stuff. That's when I started meditating for the first time, and I thought meditating was like bullshit. And I watched a lot of kung fu movies, so I always seen the shit, and I just thought it was like, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't gonna make me a better fighter. <laughs> but yo, the idea. So this is what this is what meditating uh did for me, and I don't do it as much as a. Uh, as I should anymore, but I, when I was first really learning, I did a lot. I did it like every day, and I and I was really bad at it because it's it's this idea 
the idea of sitting down in one place thinking was was stupid to me or trying not to think excuse me was stupid to me and i didn't understand how that worked um but you know what it did and it like it takes time man because like the whole idea is like to keep going without having a thought um he's breathing in air breathing you know and then once you start realizing that oh you have a thought you're supposed to throw it away and continue again and it takes time to grow and some people can meditate for hours and hours i don't have that kind of patience nor time right <laughs> but here's what it did for me like it made me sit with my emotions like i sat down and so when i first started meditating i was crying a lot because <laughs> i didn't know how much was pent up i didn't know how much pent up anxiety i had i didn't know how much pent up like anger i had i was mad at myself mostly more so than people i was mad at myself and i never took that time because you know we just go We just go, we swallow that shit down and we just go. And I never took uh, the time to really be like, yo, how are you? How are you feeling emotionally? Because you got to check in with yourself. You know, so now even now, like when I get upset, I'm just like, all right, you're upset right now. And I know I'm like, okay, check in with my emotions. I'm upset. Why am I upset? And that always calms me down when I know why I'm mad. Because then I can talk to someone like, listen, and I'll tell somebody, look, I'm upset right now. So I think this is what we should do. Blah, 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 blah. Like, I can have a conversation upset and not be yelling at somebody. But before I couldn't, before I had one of those exploding ones, you know, <laughs> I had an exploding, I'd be like, mm, get away from me. Ah! Like, I want to fight you. That was me, uh, like, eight years ago. <laughs> and now, now I'm just like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm annoyed. I'm a little sad because of such and such. And that helps me get through it. And I'm like, well, why are you sad? I'm sad because I'm disappointed because I should, you know, I want to do this and not going to do that because such and such. All right, well, next time, let's make sure we do such and such and such. And I go like, great, break. And I talk to myself like that. I have these great conversations with me, usually out loud uh, in public. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's what meditating did for me. All right. Uh, so, so anyways, going back to uh, David Goggins' book. Um, so this was a puny kid getting bullied. Um, had the racial discrimination, the abusive father does one of the hardest things in the world to go to Navy SEALs training three times and pass it. And I was just like, yo, there's, there's no reason in the world when people hear these stories that you should feel bad about yourself. Like you can control it. And he talks about that, like a hundred percent owning the fact that he was, he's like known for doing like one of the, like the most rigorous kind of, uh, athletic events, like, you know, the decathlons and stuff like that. And, uh, and actually, Cam, isn't your mom like a hardcore ath- like decathlon? She has done multiple triathlons, yeah. marathons. Iron Man Ironmans. stuff? Has she yep. done Iron Man? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, David Gogg is one of those guys who are like, so you know what kind of, like, mental preparation and stuff that takes and the yes. physical abuse that it puts on you, you know? And that's way more mental than it is physical. Oh, yeah, because once you get to the body to a certain point, it's all in your head. Right, right. And then it's like, can I keep going? Yep. Like your body wants to break. You want to quit? And it's just like, yo, okay, how tough am I? And I think there's this thing about the Marines. Uh, I might have this 100% wrong, but there's still like 40% that you don't use. So no, when your you body, f- when your body feels like it's about to quit, I think you still have, you have 40% left. Yes, yes. So when you feel done, you still have 40% left. And that's like, that's tapping into a whole nother level of your mentality. So I remember when I used to, when I used to, when I used to do sports back in the day, in my <laughs> Al Bundy moments. <laughs> but I remember when I used to wrestle and stuff like that and, um, and play football, like, yeah, like it, it never. No matter how exhausted, it's like whoever. It's the whole thing. Whoever wants it more wins, you know. And I was like, and my whole thing always was like, can I, can I be the master of my body? Can I be the master of my mental? Because there's times that I want to go work out, I don't feel like it. But it's like, and that's where procrastination comes in and all this other stuff. And it's like, well, can I own my mind? Can I be strong enough to be like, hey, I want to go through this. I, I control me at all times. Not, well, also me, but not me. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Ken? Yes. <laughs> the me that's me, but not really me. <laughs> But that's how I feel like I feel like procrastination is me versus this other person. Um, this is a guy named Stephen Pressfield. He wrote this book, The Art, The War of Art, The War of Art, not The Art of War, The War of Art. And Stephen Pressfield calls it the resistance. OK, so he's always like, oh, the resistance is that's what he named procrastination, the resistance. Um, so if that helps to give it a name, that's your enemy um, to battle that every day. If that helps you, then do that. Uh, I just call it lazy Chaz. I go like, hey, Chaz, we ain't fucking around today. All right. You get your bitch ass. That's how I talk to myself. That's literally how I talk to myself. I cuss myself out daily because that's how I grew up in wrestling and football <laughs> and having tough coaches. But that's how you could talk. We beat a punk. Go beat a bitch. And I was like, how we got hyped up and you had to work harder, you know? But that's literally how I talk to myself because I, sometimes I need to. Sometimes I'm in bed. I'm like, yo, you say you're going to go work out today. What's up? Why are you laying in bed? I'm like, I don't feel like it. And I'm like, oh, yo, you don't. Hey, guys, he don't feel like it. Oh, Chaz, don't feel like me. Get your punk ass up. And then I jump myself and I get up. And that's literally how I do. And I know that's weird. That's my interpretation. But that's how I talk to myself. And that works 
for me. So you gotta find something that works for you. But also when I do that, I always talk about like, why did you want to do this in the first place? Why are you trying to go work out? Uh, Cause I want to live. I don't want to be a fat. I hate the way I look at my clothes. It'd be all kind of stuff. And I'm like, all right, so let's get up. Huh? All right. So anyways, that's what I do. All right, the second book, uh, Stupid Dope, it's actually called Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. Will it? Willink? Have you heard of uh, Jocko? I have not. All right, so Jocko's another uh, Marine. I think he's a Navy SEAL guy also. Uh, extreme Cat. You know, he's a, he's a he's an older white dude. He's bald, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your foot hood's great. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. You got a migraine? Awesome. <laughs> so it's like everything is like, yeah, that's the best thing that could happen to you right now. Your girl left you one. Yeah. Okay, that's that's what you need in your life. Uh, he's really extreme about making things uh, turn that positive into a negative. Nope. Turn that negative into a positive. Right? Shut up, Cam. <laughs> it's like you want to make sure that – and I always saw that too, man. I was like everything I always thought was going to be bad – I got fired from this job. I got fired. I've been fired a few times, but this time, it, then it started getting good. Whenever I started like missing on quote unquote opportunities, something better always came along. And I didn't know what that was about for the longest, but it was like, if you trust in the plan, good things are going to happen. So I got fired from this job. And then um, this was when Marlon Wayans was doing this. Uh, what the funny? It was like a, uh, uh, it was like funny or die. Um, the black version you know, with Marlon Wayans. And then, uh, and that's how I met like him and his whole crew and like the camp and some of the other um, Waynes uh, who are like um, really, really, really good ass family. It's not supposed to be a, a name drop, by the way, but just telling you my story. But that's how I kind of got like my career started was like hanging out with these cats. And um, and so this job man, I was working this job because I was like I said, I was only trying to make money. I was working 70, 80 hours a week. And at the time I was like, yo, I'm making money now, but now I don't have time. I was like, I don't have time. So I was like, hey, you have this money to go take these classes, to go to go shoot stuff that you want to shoot, but now you don't have the time for it. And so then I got fired from one of the – I had two jobs. I got fired from one of the jobs. And I was like, man, I can't believe this. This is going to ruin my plan. I was going to make this much money. And then I was like um, – then what the funny came in, and I started working with them, and it was like, oh, this, is, uh, this happened to work out perfectly because I had enough money to pay my bills, and I had enough money to take these classes, and I started a part-time job, and I was that was enough to pay my bills. And it was like, yo, that worked out extremely well like it was and i couldn't do it myself because i was like one track mind um but sometimes man the universe would just come and take care of you you know if you do your part the universe man i always think that like do your part you gotta do your part you know and uh i was so blessed that that happened and it wouldn't have started if i like never took that opportunity when i was in jail that's like it goes all the way back to that to realize like i'm an idiot and i solve my own problems which was money and I was thinking, like, where would I have been, you know, I've been still scraping around, scrounging around, <laughs> trying to find a dollar, trying to get money, making, blaming other people instead of taking blessings. And I feel like when I stopped blaming other people, I started doing my part, more blessings started coming to me, you know? And I, I don't know if it usually works out like that. That attitude, I think, attracts more people. I, I agree, man. Like, it's not something that, like, you plan to do, but I was kind of like, yeah, man, this is this is my fault. How can I fix this thing? And and, and and let me go do this. Let me go do this for like this is what I literally, literally, literally when I finished the UCLA writings program, I did the UCLA writings program from the money that I saved up. And I'm like not more, less than a month after I finished that entire program, I got my first writing job. And it was like and, and granted, like <laughs> the writing job came from my best friend, Jasmine Brown, the wonderful writer writing on uh, Ambition. Watch Ambition on Network. All right. <laughs> but my first writing job came from that. And it happened to be my best friend from third grade. And I happened to be ready for it because I did the work. I was doing all the UCB classes. I was doing all the, uh, 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 you know, pilot writing classes, the 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 um, spec script writing classes. Like, I did the work, you know, right, reading the books. Like, I did all that for years. It wasn't just after I finished that program. This has been a process for, like, two to three years. And then I got my first opportunity. And I was like, that's not an accident. <laughs> I was like, that's not an accident, bro. That's not a, That's not an accident. You know, and then I was like, I earned that. I was like, I earned that. I went from being in jail to earning some shit that I worked for, from following the plan. And I thought that was like, that that made me a true believer of like owning up my shit, because I was like, yeah. And then it take and it, it does this, man. Like, it takes everyone. Like, like I, t- I, t- I wanted to make sure I take everything on myself so no one can hold anything against me. You know what I mean? Like when I try to be when I try to own something, I'm the first one to apologize. I'm like, hey, yo, I, I know I fucked up. Like, that's my fault. 
Um, but it's something that no one can ever hold over my head because not only am I going to, and, and this is the awesome thing about apologizing. It's not only am I going to own this. I, I messed up. That's on me. Here's what I'm going to do to fix it and make sure this never happens again. I think it's the second part of an apology. Oh, that's, that's what saying. That's part of the meaning of I'm sorry. Yes. Is that you will not do that again. And, and so, and so to take that one step further, I'm like, here's my plan to make sure this doesn't happen again. You know what I mean? I'm like, whether it's a job, whether you mess up at work, hey man, people people mess up at work and they're scared they're gonna get fired. You know? And uh really come up to come up to your boss next time you mess up, like, listen, I know I screwed up. I screwed up, that was hundred percent my fault. Even if it's not hundred percent your fault, if you're in charge of supervisor, take that, take that. But like, hey, that's hundred percent my fault, man. Listen, I was thinking, I know I messed up. Here's what I'm gonna do, you know, my apologies. Here's what I'm gonna do to make sure. Here's other steps I'm gonna take to ensure that doesn't happen again. What do you think about that? I do that with my wife, I do that with my family, I do that with anybody I give a shit about. I go, I know I messed up, man. That's my fault. Here's what I'm going to do in the future to make sure that doesn't happen again. And people appreciate the shit out of that. And that's how you gain respect. Yes. Cause nobody nobody wants that guy to be like, oh, well, see, well, look, man, <laughs> like I wasn't my fault. Like, first off, I'm like, all right, this guy. And then I've had people, man. I've had people who I'm supposed to go on the road with to do stand up with. Just you, they just they flop, they flake. How many flakers I had? And then you hit them up. They're like, oh man, I just you know some things. Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, you know, I'm like, nah, man, you full of shit. You know, once I deem you full of shit, you full of shit forever. There's some people that I'm full of shit to ever for because <laughs> I screwed up many times. and didn't own it. And there's some people who think that Chaz will never get right. And I'm I'm so sorry. I hope I called you. If I didn't call you right now, I'm looking you in the eyes. I apologize for that. And here's what I'll do to ensure that never happens again. I don't have anything for you right now. <laughs> we talk again. I promise I'll do that. All right. Where we at, Cam? Where we at on time? 36 minutes. Damn, Cam. You're supposed to cut me off a long time ago. This is actually going pretty good, though, right? No, yeah. You are on a roll. I didn't want to just catch you. I appreciate sentence. that, Cam. Um, all right. So let me do this last one real quick. Um. Uh, this last one. So there's this guy I follow a lot uh, YouTube and on his podcast. He's a great dude, Tom Belayu. Bele- Did I say his name right, Cam? You know, him? I'm not. Uh, heard of him? I think you said. I feel like you've said that name before. Yeah, I think I've I've definitely mentioned because I. So Tom Belayu has this show called um, Impact Theory on on YouTube, and Tom he's like the owner of Quest, uh, like the Quest bars. He's like one. Of, he's a billionaire. All right, guys, he's a billionaire. And you can do you can look at Tom's whole story um, on other stuff. But Tom got really big when he wrote this article about. Um, even if he got hit by a drunk driver, he would take 100% ownership of it. And it was, like, controversial, and people were asking, like, why? And I thought that was, like, the most... And I, I had already been on this journey. This is why I was watching this cat, because I was learning from other people how to be better. Um, and I thought it was the dopest thing in the world that even... So, so me and my wife had this thing about 2 a.m. Like, I'm like, I don't really want you to be out anywhere after 2 a.m. because that's when most bars clear, and that's when you're going to get the most... You know, the highest volume of drunk drivers is going to be after 2. Right? So I'm like, you can't control... Other people. I had a friend, uh, my man Angelo Bowers. He passed away from a drunk driver. And after that, I was like, every time I hear somebody be like, "Yo, DUI checkpoints, be careful," I'm like, "Yo, fuck that." Like that's awful, bro. Like stop trying to clear people because I'm like, now you're letting these people know where to go to dodge drunk, you know, DUI checkpoints so they go go kill somebody else. And I know the people who haven't lost their family to drunk drivers. So fuck all you drunk drivers. First off, go get either stay at the bar and sleep outside with Lyft and Uber these days. There's no excuse. There's no excuse, man. There's no excuse. You're, you're like, like it's damn near premeditation murder to not take care of that if you know you're going to go drive drinking, you know? Now, premeditation murder might be a, 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 a little outside of there because not that you premeditated. But, hey, you know that can lead to murder, right? You know what I mean? If I'm walking around with a gun with my safety off, I know that can shoot somebody. All right, anyways. It'd be criminal negligence. Is that the crime? Uh, it's a bunch of things. Can you get life in prison? Do not ask me. <laughs> I hope so. Um, so anyways, that was his thing. And uh, I was Tom Blayu's thing about taking extreme ownership of everything. And I just thought it was like the, the best thing in the world you can do, man. It's like you, you, you literally, and I hate this, you literally have the opportunity in your life to pretty much control where you want to be, your destiny, how much money you make by what you do. Literally what you do controls everything that you want. And it takes a little foresight, a little planning. It's not even a lot. You just can do a little bit seriously. Every single day, you can change your entire life. And there's so many people out there who aren't happy. And there's so many people who complain. And you have the opportunity to fix it. So fix that shit. The idea of blaming somebody else is like, it's so, it's so childish and immature to ever blame somebody else for some shit. Now, hey, look. 
I get this idea, okay? Because <laughs> everything is hindsight. I get this idea that if you entrusted, let's use this as an example. It's what came in my head that if you entrusted your best man to hold your wedding wings, your uh, wedding rings, and, you, and they lost them, then you're gonna be like, "Yo, this is your fault." <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> people can let you down. You know what I mean? But then I go like, I should just held on to it myself. I should have just did that myself, and then we wouldn't have had this problem. But that's how you take ownership of something. And homeboy should have been like, hey, man, I know I fucked up your wedding. Here's what I'm going to do to ensure it doesn't happen next time, right? That's what a weird friend would do. Hey, Cam, man, it was great having you here, bro. I'm always here. <laughs> hey, Cam, it was great having you on the mic, bro. I know yeah. you guys can't see Cam. Cam didn't want you guys to see him. You don't want to be stalked. You don't want to have panties thrown and thrown at him everywhere you go. It's one more thing to edit. <laughs> All right. Is that why? Can <laughs> Not directly. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching C Minus Society. Uh, keep checking every week. Yo, please like, comment, share. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell them it's not safe for work. Uh, I thought NSF was a. Uh, I thought it was a, a sex thing for the longest until I, I googled. <laughs> well, it, it, it can relate to that. True that you could get on like not safe for work. Ah, uh, 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 how do you turn? How do you turn this off? <laughs> uh, take us with us next week. And um, hey, you guys think I'm full of shit? Please say that in the comments. If you think this helped at all, please say that in the comments. All right, see you guys next week.